All right, guys, so I'm out here tonight with MC Pro. Again, uh, teaching you guys the basics of filmmaking and how you can guys get some really good quality footage out of your cell phone. One thing I'm finding out, so right now I'm using AY Gamut and I switched my log profile from 60% down to 100%. And I notice I get a lot more details in the shadow. And then even like right now, I'm switching between shots. Uh, a couple of the shots, it was like a lot of light. So I switched in log 60%. So like the more light I had, I went to 60. The less light I had, I went to 100. So even right now, let me see where I'm at. So right now I'm at 100% and I'm gonna go ahead and switch it to 60% in the same situation. I got a light right here. I'm gonna switch it to 60% so you can see what it looks like. So now here is an M-Log uh, at 60%. And again, we got 60, 80, and 100. So this is something I've never done before. I've actually just always kept it at one log profile throughout the whole shoot. So again, just experimenting right now and just uh, seeing what, what kind of footage, how I can get some of the high quality footage out of our cell phone devices, okay? So also I'm using 1.55 anamorphic lens. I'm using the Usky Vision lens. Uh, it's a clip-on lens, just clips right on. Actually, this is the first time I've actually crammed it on there on top of on top of my moment case so it's working out pretty well here tonight it's, it's nice and snug link will be down in the description if you guys are interested in that anamorphic lens So again, to keep that noise down, you got to keep that ISO as low as possible. Uh, I'm not going to go over 200. So yeah, a lot of the shots will be dark, but again, just looking for a light source is most important when you're filming at night. You still got to have some light if you want to keep your ISO as low as possible. So that's uh, my ISO setting. Also, I've been, after every shot, I always review my footage and I noticed there's some ghosting happening on like this side or this side of the lens there's like this ghosting and it's because the way I have the, the lens mounted to it here right now, I notice if I go like that, it goes away. So the way I have it mounted on top of the moment case is not working out because light is actually seeping in on the side and it's causing this ghosting on the image there. So I'm gonna go ahead and change that out. Now, another thing you need to remember about when you're using anamorphic lens, if you're trying to get super sharp images, that's not gonna typically happen with anamorphic lens. There will be a little bit of blurriness. You won't get super tack sharp images. And that's pretty much the nature of anamorphic lens, even on the big cameras, the big cine cameras, like compared to a normal spherical uh, lens, which tend to be more sharper, anamorphic, you won't have that super tack sharp sharpness so just when you use an anamorphic lens be beware of that okay <laughs> yeah <laughs> All my diehard fans who are still with me, the key word for this video to post down in the comments is night filming. I love it. Actually, no, that's confusing. I love night filming. That's more easier. But anyway, since you stick with me, I want to give you guys the good stuff. Now, as far as shooting with an anamorphic lens, do you need it? Not really. I would say if it fits your story, then use it. If you're shooting a sci-fi style video, or something that has to do with that type of genre, then an anamorphic lens will be appropriate. If I'm doing a documentary about sushi, do I need an anamorphic lens? No, you know, keep it stock. You're doing product photography, or not product photography, you're doing a product video or review, you don't need an anamorphic lens. This is stylized. If it matches your story, then use it. Me right now, I don't really have a story. I'm just out filming, practicing, getting better, trying to understand lighting, what 
what it takes to get a good, high quality, clean image. That's all I'm doing. And the reason I chose to use the anamorphic lens because one, me personally, I love anamorphic. It's something that's nostalgic back to my 80s movies that I used to watch. Blue, uh, what a, uh, sorry, sorry, Blue Thunder, Blade Runner. A lot of those were shot on anamorphic lenses. and this is very nostalgic for me to use anamorphic lenses. and that's why I use them. But again, it's just another tool that we have in our toolbox as far as mobile filmmaking to get, to get the highest quality that we could possibly get out of a mobile device. To maximize, to getting the cleanest image with less noise, you really need to understand how to shoot one image, one frame, with minimal noise. And to do that, you really need to start practicing your photography. If you can shoot a nice, clean image doing a photo, you know you can shoot nice, clean images doing video. Because again, video is basically lots of photos put together, 24 shot, 24 photos per second, all right? So again, down in the description, I have a guide for mobile photography on how to use your device in full manual mode for Android users, iPhone users. Yeah, you gotta get a third party app, which I think is crazy. But all of my Android users, you really need to understand photography before you can really understand how to get clean images and video. Because again, video, photography is the foundation. Shooting one clean image can result in shooting a lot of clean images, 24 frames per second, 24 images per second. So down in the, down in the description, I do have a link for my mobile photography guide, how to shoot in full.